Good morning, St. Michael's family. Today's October 18th reading is Give to God the Things That Are God's by the Right Reverend Diane Jardine Bruce. Once again, in today's gospel, the Pharisees are trying to trip up Jesus. If Jesus supports the paying of the tax, his Jewish siblings, who are rebelling against the Roman occupation, will shun him. If Jesus says it's unlawful to pay the tax, he'll be in trouble with the Roman authorities. What does Jesus do? He asks them to look at the coin, pay the tax, meaning give to the emperor back his own coin. Then Jesus adds this wonderful line, give to God the things that are God's. What exactly is God's? Well, we are. Our Christian faith in God points us always to live a life of gratitude and generosity. God showed us how we are to live and how to give to God the things that are God's. God gave us his son, God's first fruit. We are asked to do the same, remembering that everything we have, everything we do, everything we are, is a gift from God, and it is a gift that is meant to be shared. When we share from our first fruits, as God shared his first fruits with us, we are modeling the same generosity God has shown us. Remember, we have two sets of three-legged stools here in our Episcopal branch of the Jesus Movement, Scripture, reason and tradition, time, talent, treasure. The first shapes our faith. The second is how we use the gifts we have been given to live out our faith. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Welcome on this 18th day of October, our Sunday worship at St. Michael's. Greetings, friends on Facebook, friends on our website who are watching us live there and all around the world where we are finding ministering in the midst of the pandemic and online 
takes the gospel message to each and every one of our homes. I'm Father Matthew, and I have the privilege of being the rector here at St. Michael's, where our community is scattered far and abroad, but in Christ, there is no such place as far away. And so we gather as a people of faith, proclaiming the song that we proclaim in the Liturgy of the Word every Sunday, the Gloria. be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord. There is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know, from the rising of the sun and from the west, that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make weal and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pray with me this portion of Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all the gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But it is the Lord who made the heavens. O oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence! O oh, the power and the splendor of his sanctuary! Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. A reading from Paul's letter to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. 
We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you, because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we prove to be among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turn to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then, teacher, what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The struggle in our country is real. The struggle for us as Christians is real. The struggle between being a good citizen and a follower of Jesus Christ is a struggle that has come up again and again and again. And Jesus is no stranger to the potential of divided loyalties and is challenged today by the Pharisees, disciples, and the Herodians who come to him with exactly that question. In this case, Rome is the occupying force. Rome, who has taken over their land, is now, has been asking for generations for Jews to pay taxes for the land that has been colonized by the outsider. The coins of the realm are used for all kinds of commerce. And of course, taxes in that form of coinage is collected by people like Matthew, the tax collector sitting at the tax booth, who are there to make sure that monies are collected for their rulers, their outside overlords. As a matter of fact, in about the time Jesus was born and about as a young child or newly born, there was a revolt coming out of Galilee around the very particular issue of taxation that the Pharisees and the Herodians are asking Jesus about. And in the gotcha question that they ask, is it lawful to pay taxes? Jesus can't win either way if he says yes or no. If Jesus says yes, now a generation after the first major revolt was crushed on this very issue, if Jesus says, yes, it's okay to pay taxes, then he is disavowing, dishonoring, and not siding with those who were oppressed and killed and put down in that revolt. And of course, if he says, yes, you can pay taxes, then Jesus has somehow shown that the divinity of God must be less and that the oppressors are right to demand taxation. Of course, if Jesus says, no, it is not lawful to pay taxes, then he is becoming immediately a uh, for a, a force for sedition. He is immediately saying, yes, I side with those who want to overthrow the government, to overthrow our Roman rulers. Jesus is, of course, not only the Son of God, but he is an excellent rhetorician, and he knows the hearts of those who are coming to challenge him. And unlike you and me who might be challenged with a yes or no gotcha kind of a question and have to go away and think about it, Jesus masterfully turns back on his questioners and says, okay, show me the coin you're talking about. Have you got a coin on you? And I love this, perhaps like when a master magician stands and says, have you got a coin? And very readily like perhaps the stooges they are set up to be here in Matthew's gospel, they dig into their pockets and pull out a denarius. Now, if they were trying to get Jesus on a gotcha question, these very fine upstanding followers of Abraham and Moses who follow the Ten Commandments as the Pharisees and the Herodians are to do, Jesus could have turned to them and said, Ah, I gotcha because you are carrying money on you. You are carrying the coin of the realm. You are carrying a graven image with Caesar's head upon it. Caesar's head and the inscription which says, this is divinity. Caesar is the son of the almighty Jupiter, God himself. 
a son of God. And so Jesus could very easily turn to them and say, what are you doing carrying around a graven image? But no, 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 he has further questions for them. Whose head and title is this on the coin? A very obvious question to which they must respond, well, it's Caesar's. Jesus obviously gives the response that we know most clearly. We have been taught since third grade Sunday school, render unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, render unto God that which is God's. We could recite that a million times, and yet we are challenged ourselves in the midst of our own struggle between that which our nation or country demands of us and that perhaps of which our Christian responsibility and obligations to God demands of us. We are not in the Episcopal Church want to ever telling anyone how to vote. And in this season of elections, I'm not going to do that either. I am not going to come down on one side or the other as Jesus doesn't come down on one side or the other in their response, in his response to their questioning in today's gospel. And yet, I think the challenge or the greater challenge for us beyond the struggle is to recognize not just who we are, but whose we are. Jesus' response to his questioners is not for all time to decide how the struggle should be resolved between what we owe to the IRS, what we owe to our country, and what we owe to our church, or to our neighbor, or to our God, to our Savior. We are not meant to resolve that struggle in this question, but to find our proper relationship to God in it, and perhaps how our decisions for operating as citizens are to flow from the second part of Jesus' response. Render unto God that which is God's. As followers of Jesus Christ, as baptized members, we were each marked by the Holy Spirit, sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism, and marked as Christ's own forever. We sometimes say that when we put the oil on the head and are told that we are marked as Christ's own, we could perhaps put a tattoo in the spot where the oil is placed and marked, as if to show for all time that we are marked as Christ's own. And yet it is more important that those tattoos show up on our heart and in our inward being and in our actions and in our behavior and in our giving and our forgiving. Marked as Christ's own reminds us whose we are in the midst of our struggles and in the midst of asking what even our current day Caesars ask of us. One of the hallmarks of being marked as Christ's own is recognizing that we are not alone, we are not operating by ourselves, but in relationship with our neighbor, with our loved ones, and yes, even with our enemies. For Jesus, who taught us to love our neighbor, more so taught us to love our enemies. Perhaps one of the greatest struggles we have in our country today is that we are operating mostly as individual eyes, individual egos, forgetting even in our pandemic, especially in our pandemic isolation, that we are having a sense of disconnect from one another. In that greater call to be marked as Christ's own, we have to recognize that there is one God and Father of all, 
one baptism, one God, one people. We are at our strongest as a church and as a nation when we remember our interconnectedness and our dependency and accountability on and for and to one another. Being marked as Christ's own means remembering that while we have a deeply personal relationship with our God and our Savior, as Christians, it is never a private relationship. It is not a private religion that we are a part of, but a highly communal one. Yes, even across our distancing. And so how do we do this? How do we render unto God that which is God's? Saying our prayers every day offering our prayers for those especially with whom we disagree and who get under our skin. Praying for the ones perhaps we are casting ballots against. And recognizing that there is a greater virus than the coronavirus, and that is perhaps in our viral discourse. How can we, as bearers of Christ's image, Find a conversation and a discourse which is whole and holy. Not meaning we don't hold the other accountable for what may have been said, but the, we recognize that the other that we are speaking to often is also marked as Christ's own forever, and that we both are bearers of God's image. It is to this we are called today beyond the struggle which is real, beyond wondering how do we render unto Caesar that which is Caesar and render unto God's that which is God's. First, let us recognize that we are God's. We are marked as Christ's own forever. We belong to him. Then perhaps our actions and our decisions our laws, our voting, will find its proper place now and forever. Amen. Let us say together the Nicene Creed found on page 358 and inscribed in many of our hearts the words of our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With form three of the prayers of the people found on page 387, 
in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray now for our own needs and those of others. We pray for those in need. We pray for those in any sickness, transition, or distress. And we pray especially for those committed to our prayers at St. Michael's. The Routon and Rhodes families, Gina and Larry Putt, Lucy Vellner, Marjorie Deal, Brian Nipple, Rob Auer, Neva Hargreaves, Victoria, Tracy, Julie Hickson, Mary Jane Willoughby, Tony and Burl Cockrum, Jake and family, Ed Truswell, Andy Zaver, Marie, Red, Craig, Nora Arnold, Joyce Frost, Tisha Harris, Carl Lakovitz, Anita Thomas, Lynn Switalski, Barb Coddens, Marcy Cortez, Charlene Bowman, and for those we now name. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs, that those for whom our prayers are offered may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your loving care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We give thanks for the birthdays this week of October. Noah Fulkerson, Linda McLaughlin, Kara Griffith, Aurelia Ladd, Mary Jane Willoughby, and Jim Snyder. We pray, O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We give thanks for the anniversaries in this week of October for Larry and Mary Jane Willoughby, for Chris and Jenny Dunlap, and for Carl and Susan Baxmeyer. Let us pray. O gracious and ever-living God, look mercifully on these couples as they renew the promises they have made to each other. Grant them your blessing and assist them with your grace, that with true fidelity and steadfast love they may honor and keep their promises and vows through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And we pray for those who have died, especially this week we remember Patricia Fitzgerald, Ziggy Zhang, Ruth Green, Einar Heinrichsen, Carl Swarzynski, 
Paul Haas, Phyllis Hamilton. Let us pray. Eternal Lord God, you hold all souls in life. Give to your whole church in paradise and on earth your light and your peace, and grant that we, following the good examples of those who have served you here and are now at rest, may at the last enter with them into your unending joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Say with me an act of spiritual communion. Be present, be present, O Jesus, our great high priest, as you were present with your disciples in the upper room. Since we cannot at this time partake of your holy sacrament, of your body and blood at the altar of your church, send us your Holy Spirit. Meet us right where we are, that we may greet you in our bodies and in our blood. In this act of spiritual communion, redeem all our days by your victory over death. Forgive our sins. Banish our fears, make us bold to praise you and to do your will, and steel us to wait for the consummation of your kingdom on the last great day. Through you, O Christ, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit, we worship and praise one God, now and forever. Amen. In the words that our Lord Jesus Christ himself taught us, we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Once again, we will be gathering for a drive-through communion service, well, just simply driving through for communion, knowing that the weather is unpredictable and intemperate, knowing that the numbers of the virus are quite high here in St. Joe County, rather than lingering in our parking lot for outdoor full communion, Please feel free to drive by between 10.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. on this morning, and we will be glad to serve you the body of Christ and offer the blessings of the church here. In the meantime, the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.